open seat here, uh, the Republican seat, uh, most likely. Uh, and we've got four candidates for the position here tonight. Uh, first, I want to welcome up Jen Besner to give a one minute introduction to why we are running for the Texas House. Thank you. Halfway through, so if you haven't taken a deep breath, take it, relax. We're almost there, so uh, it is an exciting evening, so don't hit start yet. Um, but uh, my name is Jen Besner. I've lived in the Bastrop County area for 17 years. After I earned my master's degree, I went and worked at Texas State University. I was the director of fitness there. I have two school age girls. And for the last eight years, I worked in Smithville for a small company. And since then, now I have taken my campaign on full time. I am just like many of you, a strong conservative Christian that knows that we have to fight and that we have to know this country was founded on Christian principles and it's our duty to preserve it for our future, our children's future, and for generations to come. I'm someone like you that loves living in rural Texas and also knows the growth is coming, but wants to keep our sense of small town community and also know we must cut property taxes. I spent more than 40 hours riding along with Sheriff's Department deputies in all five counties. I saw firsthand how our law enforcement is understaffed, and I'm going to wrap it up, and I saw how Biden's open border policies have affected us here in Bastrop County with crime, drug, and prostitution issues. We'll, uh, thank you. Uh, we've got our next candidate, Roger Michael. We've got four of us uh, take a seat here. Uh, we've got plenty of space. And next up, we've got Stan uh, Gertis. Gerties? Gerties. Thanks, Sam Gerties. Hello. I'm Stan Gerties. I'm a fifth generation Texan, uh, born and raised in Waco. Moved down to Austin, went to school, University of Texas, graduated with a government degree. Uh, after that, I got on with Gov Governor Perry. Uh, he and I have been working together for nearly a decade. Uh, I've been with him in various different capacities, uh, shut down the governor's office with him, transitioned to, over to his presidential campaign, and then um, uh, moved up to Washington, D.C. January of 2017 as a senior advisor to him at the Department of Energy when he was secretary under Donald Trump's administration. Um, we, we traveled the world promoting American energy independence and America first policies. And in 2019, moved back to Texas and Smithville, where I'm currently on the city council, making sure that we've got what we need and uh, forward thinking for the growth and the infrastructure that we need in a small town. And that's what I'm going to do for the, our district. Make sure that the folks who live here have what they need and can trust the leadership that they're uh, putting into Austin. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we've got Tom Black. Howdy. Howdy. I'm applying to you, the bosses around here, to be your champion in Austin. I'm the most qualified to, and the most committed to champion our values there. And I've got proof of that. I've been spending the last four legislative sessions working on conservative issues, the Texas legislative priorities, and a few of my own. Uh, as a result of that effort, the organization this man uh, represents, Texas Scorecard, awarded me with one of the uh, Texas Conservative Leader Awards in 2021. I have a law degree that I've never earned a li uh, living at. It tells me uh, better to understand our constitutions that I'm going to swear an oath to, and I have sworn an oath to, uh, and to better craft legislation that I've done a lot of. I have lots of creative ideas to stop this assault from D.C. on everything we hold dear. I'm a businessman. I have a chemical engineering degree from Texas A&M and a Harvard MBA. I'd love to be your champion. Thank you. Last up, we've got Trey Rutherford. Hey, Trey. Hey, Trey. Howdy. I'm also an ag. I've seen a lot of you out here tonight. Uh, I'm Trey Rutledge. I'm 25. I'm a Marine Corps veteran, and I'm a Christian. I'm running because uh, the late, great Andrew Breitbart once said politics is downstream from culture, and I believe that's never been more true than what we're seeing today. From the child abuse of mutilating the privates of our children to believing that children under six weeks in the womb are children and that somehow saying after that 
is good enough for banning abortion. I believe we just have elected leaders who are truly fighting for conservative values. They're doing just enough to tell you that they've worked on your priorities, to tell you to remember their name at election time, because constitutional carry, or because at the last minute they started building that wall. They are doing these things to save face, and they're not holding true to conservative values. And I saw what it's like over in Iraq, Kuwait, what it's like to not have freedoms. And that's happening in our state. And I'm running to make sure that it does not go any further. Thank you. Hold on to the microphone. We'll go back around the other way for these questions. Again, 30 seconds, and we want to get in uh, at least four questions here. So uh, first question for you, uh, the Texas House, uh, Democrats serve in positions of leadership. Republicans have voted to do this numerous times. If you were in the Texas House, would you vote to allow Democrats to hold committee chairmanships? No. I know a lot of people believe that they should, but a lot of these key committee leaders are shooting down conservative priorities. That means the majority of Texans want something to happen, and because these people are in leader position or leadership positions, they shoot down those priorities. We blame these rhinos and everything in the House, the Senate, but a lot of it is because they're allowing these Democrats to be in positions of power. Most Texans vote for Republicans to be in power, and I believe that's who should make the decisions in our state. The answer is no. Uh, I'm running to change the culture of the Texas House to be less beholden to the Democrats, less beholden to the special interests, and more beholden to the principles, priorities, and platform of the Republican Party of Texas, as well as uh, us here in the district. Uh, the, uh, w the problem we have, uh, we're gonna have a freshman class coming in that's one of the biggest ever in the history of Texas. And I'm hoping to work with my fellow freshmen when I get there to change that culture. We're gonna have a block to say, we're not doing politics as usual anymore. We've got a big challenge for DC we gotta face. Thank you. I've been to DC. I've seen how broken our Congress is. And so, you know, I'm, I'm hesitant to sign on uh, to anything that makes us, uh, you know, more broken. And so, uh, you know, if, if elected, and get, and get there, then uh, I can take a look and uh, work with our friends and, and see what we can make work that's best for the folks of Texas. Thank you. I would vote uh, no, we do not need Democratic chairs for powerful committees. Uh, one of the reasons I'm running is an issue near and dear to my heart is the fact that they're trying to put boys and women's sports. Well, I spent hours and hours and hours on the phone and email, email, email to my state legislator to find out why is that not being taken care of in the state of Texas. Because the bill went through the Education Committee, which was chaired by a Democrat. 50% of our total budget in the state of Texas is in education. It was chaired by a Democrat. That makes no sense to me. If we hold the House, we hold the, the uh, executive branch, we hold the judicial branch, why are we beholding to people to control us that way? Election integrity. Texans obviously uh, want to know that their elections are secure. The legislature did some work on it during the last session. Is there more left to be done? Election integrity is one of the big issues that we had. It was one of the priorities that I guess passed um, that we had um, under the Republican Party. I was involved um, all last spring on a call once a week um, to work on it with the Texas Federation of Republican Women. Yes, we do need to do more. We need to continue the audits. We have to be able to trust our education. I mean, our our education system and our election system. If you don't know when you vote for me that that doesn't count, well then there's really no sense in continuing to run the country that we have it. So yes, we do need to continue to work on election integrity. We always must show an ID to vote. Um, we also uh, need to make sure that we audit it as needed. Someone asked me about that earlier. Uh, I'm going to keep it short. You know, uh, I'm going to be supportive of any legislation that, that keeps uh, our elections where you trust. You know, uh, and you have to show, you know, with an ID. And uh, if, if there's anything that's going to be pushed back against that, I'm not going to be on board with it. Thank you. Uh, I created a group on uh, Facebook called Texas Election Integrity. So I've been following and working on these issues for a long time. I've, I've, I've done central count poll watch at uh, Harris County uh, in the past. 
I have a, a, my career at ExxonMobil, I was in cybersecurity, so I know a little bit about computer systems. Uh, I want to make sure that we have the ability, uh, uh, to, the more things we need to do, we need to make sure we don't have illegals on our roads. We need to make sure we have uh, the ability to rapidly resolve disputes so that we don't lose the data when somebody's cheating. Uh, and we need uh, the uh, ability to, uh, to uh, audit uh, real fast. Thanks. If we lose our elections, there's, we lose our country. If we are not confident in who we elect, then there's the polarization continues. So I believe we need to fight to continue to have voter ID laws. We need to pur purge our voter rolls of illegals, dead voters. There's no reason why people who have been dead for 15 years should be getting mail-in ballots. Yeah. <laughs> Another big thing is the illegals. That's why we need to secure the border. You notice Texas is getting hit the hardest, even though there's a lot of southern states. Because we're red, they know it, and they're coming for us through our elections. Thank you. Hold on to there. Here's our next question, uh, which is... Okay. Currently, counties do not have zoning authority, which means unincorporated areas of counties adjacent to large urban areas like Austin, San Antonio, the Metroplex, etc. have no way to manage this growth. Should counties adjacent to major metropolitan areas have the right to manage this massive influx of residents and businesses in the land that is currently unincorporated through a public hearing and zoning ordinance adoption process? Long question, but one that was very important. I'll do it, I got 30 seconds. So, I believe that we shouldn't let the cities come in. They shouldn't control our land. They shouldn't control our culture. That's why we need to give the power to the counties on the outside. I live in Lexington. As many of you know, I was called the uh, stubborn cousin of the area. Everybody's continuing to grow as fast as they can, but Lexington, we're holding out. We have about 1,200 people. Lee County has four times as many cattle as they do people. And uh, I believe we need to preserve those strong values. But understand, growth is coming, so we need to work to work with people because that growth is imminent. I do not favor uh, giving more bureaucratic control to county governments to regulate our property rights. Uh, we, one thing that I hear when I walk, walk around this district is growth is the biggest issue we face. And the biggest thing that's happened as a result of that growth, uh, primarily caused by subsidizing big corporations moving here in the past, but the, what we need to do is we need to get our property taxes under control by changing the appraisal system, and we need to get our uh, to protect our groundwater uh, from that growth. The people of Bastrop County need to decide what happens here, not people in Austin, Texas. You know, uh, this, this is a property rights thing. You know, I'm, I'm pro property rights, and if anything's going to be infringed on that, you know, people need to decide. You, Bastrop County, whether Caldwell County, what the people that live there need to be deciding what's happening, what they want, and uh, not not the folks in Austin. So. Let me clarify, this is really a question. So this is about county politics, and what was the very end of it again? <laughs> uh, uh, zoning, essentially, uh, uh, annexation. Zoning and annexation. I think that uh, Stan is right. Bastrop County voters, Lee County voters, Welland County voters should determine the direction of their county. I do think as a state representative, uh, we are responsible for some infrastructure, and it's important for us to fund that because of the growth that's coming. We have subdivisions that are being built. I think we need to hold the property, I mean, the uh, people that are building the subdivisions responsible to help pay for that. Uh, we have some pretty unsafe turnoffs in this county on state highways, and that's something that the legislators should support. Um, otherwise, I, um, the other concept is the reducing property tax. I'm going to be quick. Reducing property tax is making sure if we do mandates as a state, we should make sure we fund them. Yeah, so. uh, <laughs> yeah, Hold on, uh, one more question. We'll go back this way. Um, so be ready. Um, the last question is, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, big influx of illegal immigration on the southern border. What should the Texas legislature be doing right now um, to help fight back against that? Okay, the million dollar question, what are we going to do at the border? We've been asked it many times. I think it's going to take a multi-dimensional approach. We do need to build a wall, but we need to build a wall a little bit more affordably. Right now it's $3,200 a linear foot. To Oh, your phone is talking. Yeah, to, uh, to build our wall. Um, I also feel like uh, we need to enforce E-Verify. We need to make sure that you're supposed to be working here in the state of Texas. 
I also think that we need to look at the carrot we're dangling. We have free education, we have free health care, and we have free food. We need to evaluate and see if that's something we need to continue to offer because if we don't stop that, we're not going to stop people coming across. Um, when I was with Governor Perry, working with him in the governor's office, we did three border tours that I was a part of, and it is disgusting to see the, the conditions of which this, these folks, when they come across, are put in. Um, the sex trafficking, the drug trafficking, um, all of the horrible things that the, the fake news media doesn't want to talk about is happening in our backyard. So what do we need to do? We need to build a wall. We need to have a, 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 a government that works with each other at the state and at the federal level. Um, and we need boots on the ground and use our air assets. Thank you very much. Uh, this invasion must be stopped. Texas legislature can play a big role in that. It's primarily a law enforcement issue. I got invited to speak to a, a bunch of South Texas sheriffs because of my role in Texas constitutional, inform uh, uh, constitutional enforcement to talk to about uh, this issue, and I told them we need to enforce Texas law. <laughs> Texas legislatures need to be giving as many resources to our local and state law enforcement apparatus as possible to, to do, uh, handle this issue. Recently an article came out saying that fentanyl is now the number one killer between, for all Americans between the ages of 18 and 45. Texas is the number two state in sex trafficking. We host the top two cities in Dallas and Houston. This begins at the southern border. So we do need to build a wall. And we don't need to worry about what kind of burden that puts on the taxpayers of Texas. Because the wall's been paid for. It's rusting down the southern border. So we need to put federal government, we need to put pressure on them and get our wall back that we, the people of Texas, already paid for. It's not what can we build, what can we pay for. It's already bought for and we need to put pressure on them to get it back. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, everybody have a minute to uh, close up and give some final remarks. All right. So I want to thank you guys for having me. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. Uh, the late, great Ronald Reagan once spoke about a Cuban immigrant who came over here. And he said that he was lucky one because he had somewhere to go. And that us Americans didn't have anywhere to go if we lost it. And I believe Texas is to America what America is to the rest of the world. And we're losing that. We're losing those cultures. We're losing those values. And there's a lot of reasons for that. The southern border as we spoke. The influx of people moving in here with these large corporations and no regulation of these woke companies. We're not holding them accountable. We're letting them bring their ideologies in here. Critical race theory in the classrooms. And the way we can change that is to tell your friends to get out and vote. You can't steal an election if we all get out and vote, no matter how hard they try. So I ask you, if you have any more questions, please go to treyrutledge.org. Get out and vote, March 1st on the primaries. Thank you, and I look forward to talking to you in the back. Well, do you want a champion? Do you want somebody who's ready to be your champion? Do you want somebody who's committed to your values and will be a representative of this district to Austin and not a representative of the money man back to us. If that's what you want, I'm your guy, Tom Glass. Uh, it's a grassroots campaign. It's the okay. sufficiently funded, but we need your support if we're going to make this happen. And I hope you'll go to TomGlass.org and sign up. I hope you'll come sign up uh, with my campaign manager over here at the end to get on our email list and to volunteer. We've got a long way to go and a short time to get there uh, because we've got a country to save. We've got a state to save. We've got our liberty to save and our constitutions and our grandchildren's lives to save. Thank you. Like Tom said, he wants to be your champion. We all want to be your champion. we got some great candidates up here that are running for your support. Uh, this is a process, and uh, you know, at, at the end of this process, one of us will, will have the nomination, so to say, go to the general election, and uh, we'll all get behind that individual. But, um, I'm asking for your support. I've, uh, I've, I've worked at the uh, under Governor Perry, who's endorsed my campaign. I've been with him for nearly 10 years. We still work together today. I've worked in the Trump administration as a senior advisor. Um, and I know I, I've seen how things work, and I know what it takes to get something done. I know what it's, and I want to be your voice 
and I want to be uh, what you trust in Austin, not somebody that's just in Austin forgetting about who voted them in. That's important. Remember, Stan Gerdes will listen to you. He's going to be visible. We'll have mobile office hours throughout the district. And, and you know, um, I'm in Smithville. I'll be everywhere. So I'm asking for your support at StanGerdes.com. I need these notes because I like to talk, so I have to keep myself focused. So I do have good news. I'm here tonight because I have hope. And with your vote, I know that we can make Texas better. This is not a political game. You want a real representative that listens to you. I'm a person of action. I fought against mask mandates in our school. I spoke out against CRT, and I equipped and trained parents so they could do that also. As a member of our school health advisory board, I worked to ensure that our sex ed curriculum was appropriate. In addition, when I get to Austin, I will push for a full audit in the Department of Health and Human Services on this excessive and unconstitutional management of COVID. I will continue my efforts fighting for conservative principles to represent you in the state capitol. That is why I am running to be your state representative. If you don't remember anything else, there's a little lot said tonight. This is one thing I want you to remember. Do not forget that I know when I'm being sent to the Capitol, I'm bringing what's sent to represent you and your family. I will be honest, trustworthy, and hardworking, and I will be accessible and transparent as your citizen legislator. And thank you guys, and God bless Texas. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, moving on to the next race. Uh, another one that's getting a lot of attention, I know, down here, and that is County Judge. Uh, and I believe, I believe we have all four candidates here tonight, which is great. Uh, so first, we're going to go ahead and get started with Peter Hicks, if you want to come down. Uh, I'll go ahead and send the order, that way y'all can kind of uh, uh, know we can get up here. Peter Hicks, then I'll call it Gregory Claus. Uh, Don Louts and Lyle Nelson, but first, uh, Peter Hicks, one minute introduction while you're running. All right, good evening. Thank you guys for uh, being here tonight. It's really great to see such a big crowd. My name is Peter Hicks. I've been in Bastrop County since 2002. Been serving the citizens in a very a variety of different roles. Started as a EMS director for this county for a number of years. Uh, currently working as a uh, ESD commissioner for Bastrop County ESD number two. Very proud to be a part of that team. Uh, have even been a county commissioner for a short time, and I want to continue my service for Bastrop County. Been a conservative, Christian, raised my family here, and really looking forward to continuing, trying to review where we're at with our budget. As everybody's talked about, Bastrop County is growing. We know that the Austin is coming this way, so let's look at how we can take our tax dollars that we have, focus those on the places that we need, our law enforcement, our courts, our elections and make sure those have the integrity and the resources they need to keep Bastrop County safe and continue to support and keep us from being the place where people train and move on someplace else. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we've got Gregory Clark. Good evening. I'm glad to be here today, and it is not Klaus, it's Klaus. I was born and raised in Bastrop. Uh, Graduated from high school, went into the Navy, um, a Vietnam veteran, came back here and started our air conditioning and work, work for a guy, started and uh, bought his business after three years, owned Tiles Heating and Air Conditioning for 30 years, sold it, continued to work for him, and the reason I'm staying here, I've worked for the citizens of Bastrop County for all these years, and I would like to continue serving the citizens of Bastrop County. I enjoy visiting with the people of Bastrop County. And uh, like uh, Mr. Hicks said, we need to, we're not gonna stop growth, it's gonna keep coming. So we need to make sure our Sheriff's Department, EA Emergency Services, and EMS is taken care of. And that's about all I got to say. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> stop right on the budget. We got time left. Good evening. It's really
really great to see this turnout here today. I'm, I'm, it heartens me to know that there's so many people interested <coughs> in good government in Bastrop County. I'm Don Blox, I'm running for county judge. Something a lot of you don't, might not know, each of the 254 county judges in the state of Texas are responsible for emergency management in their respective counties. To my knowledge, none are certified in that field. If I'm elected, I will be the first certified Texas emergency manager to hold that position and serve you best in emergency management. I've served 35 years in military service. <clears throat> I've served on congressional staff. I was the first Republican elected to office. I've supported this party since 1992. And I'm here to serve you in this capacity. I would appreciate your vote. We'll be talking more. I'm looking forward to answering the questions. And uh, if, any, if anyone wants to contact me, we have my card here. That's my political photo. That's my happy photo where I'm climbing in my jet. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, last up, we've got Lyle Nelson. Good evening. I care deeply about Bastrop County. That's why I'm running for county judge. You know, there are a lot of issues facing us right now. There's a general consensus out there. Public safety, broadband, uh, emergency uh, uh, management. These are, these are issues that have really affect us here in this county. Unfunded mandates are really starting to affect us and will continue to, to, uh, to affect us if we don't move on it now. We'll be looking to our state legislators to help us with that, to ensure that our funding is, uh, is not compromised in any way, shape, or form. Thanks, Lyle. Thank you. And uh, we'll uh, go ahead and go to questions now. And uh, we'll do the same thing. So we'll go kind of back and forth and snake it here and get a few questions in. Uh, first one is, um, one of the priorities of the Republican Party of Texas is to ban taxpayer-funded lobbying. Uh, do you think that counties like Bastrop should pay lobbyists to uh, go to the Capitol House? It's kind of a loaded question. Do we want do we want paid lobbyists who represent private in industry that does not represent the the folks in our in our county? Do we want to have a voice at the legislature through either Texas Association of Counties or even Texas Municipal League? I think it's something we should be mindful of. I don't believe in taxpayer funding lobbying, but I do believe in advocacy at the uh, at the uh, at the state level. I am so glad that question was asked. I was admonished in the commissioner's court when I recommended to the members that please, you're our advocates of the people to the legislature, represent us, present our cases to us. And I was told, oh no no, that's your job as citizens. Folks, if I'm elected as your county judge, I will be your advocate to the legislature. We're not gonna hire people to do the bidding of special interests, which is really what it boils down to. It's the tyranny of the municipalities, putting a lot of money in the lobbyists, putting that in the legislature and getting their way against the rural Texans. I do not believe that county money should be paid to lobbyists. It, it's not, that, that's not the way county money should be Spent. It should be spent taking care of the people and doing services for the county and not lobbying for the things in uh, Austin. That's what I feel. Thank you. I echo these folks here. I don't believe the county should pay a lobbyist to do the job of the elected official because that's what you're hiring us to do is to advocate on behalf of the citizens of Bastrop County. So that is the principal job of Bastrop County Judge. Represent you, the people, in front of the legislature. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to the next uh, question here, which is, uh, will you modify commissioner's court meetings so at least one is at night? People who have full-time day jobs are excluded from attending commissioner's court, which means they cannot to appear to address the court on any issues. I think that is a great idea. It is very hard for you people to come stand in front of the commissioner's court if you can't get to the meeting. It's great for us that it happens at 9 a.m. on Monday mornings, but guess what? You folks have jobs. You, if you need your voice heard, how are you gonna be there without taking off from work? 
So I am very open to having that opportunity. I'm glad that it's now online where people can come and, and have that discussion, but not everybody can do that. So let's have that opportunity. I would, I would, I would be in favor of looking into that, but really the commission, uh, the county judge has four other people that have to decide something like that. And if you can't get the four commissioners to agree with you, you can't pass anything like that anyway. So, but I would be interested in having something like that at least every two months or three months. I don't know about having it every month, but you know, maybe every two months or three months, it sounds like a good idea. That was my question. I was going to close with that and recommend that. He spoiled it for me. No, second, second, uh, second meeting on the fourth Monday is going to be an evening if I'm your county judge. I'm the one who schedules the meetings. And it will be for the purpose of the working men and women in Bastrop County who can come and attend and see what their government is doing. And they can bring their kids. You know how important that is for the children to get an education about what goes on in, the, in county government? That's what I want to do. I'll be proud of it. Thank you. I think it's a wonderful idea. I'll carry a little bit further and say that we should also move the meetings to other communities within the county, Elgin and Smithville, to ensure yeah. we have an open, inclusive yeah. uh, atmosphere for our citizens to be able to participate. Yeah. Uh, next question here. Uh, what departments, commissions, committees, or divisions are you planning to add or eliminate should you be elected? I think with every plan, there needs to be a, a process. And my process is simply this, is to, is to analyze, assess, plan, and then act. I don't want to go off and make, make, a, make promises on issues that have not been fully vetted and thought through and had often participation by the public at large. Here it is right here on the front. I'll read it to you. A complete full audit of all county finances and contracts to ensure the most effective use of our current tax dollars. Two, strengthen our sheriff's department and emergency management to provide highest levels of public safety. In other words, for the sheriff's department, make sure we're paying our deputies and staff enough so they don't get, we don't train them for other counties to go and work there. We gotta stop that. Yeah. Work, there you go. Work with state government and legislators to provide the tools necessary to manage accelerated growth. I will audit, as I said, I will audit the audit the books, see where the money is going, see where it can be used best. That's what a good manager does. As I said earlier, you know, the main thing is we can't stop growth, we're not gonna stop taxes, but we're gonna all have to pay taxes. We're gonna try to keep them as low as we can. But like I said, the Sheriff Department, EMS, and 911 needs to be up to par so they can take care of things in the county. So that's my main priorities. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, like these gentlemen, I think that a full audit, look at how we're spending our money is very important, must be done. We've got that first year. We're already coming in three quarters of the budget's already uh, allocated, but we can get it planned in place. Uh, emergency management's near and dear to my heart. I've spent seven years of my life working in emergency management between Bastrop County and the Lower Colorado River Authority. I've trained managers all over the country in how to manage emergencies. And I think that that unification and how we respond to emergencies in Bastrop County needs to be strengthened to where it was. Thank you. When we talk about uh, local governments and property taxes, what, what can local governments be doing to rein in the property tax burden on citizens? Well, fortunately, we've had a county that's paid really close attention to our tax rate for the last couple of years. So it's important that we look at that, assess how we're spending those dollars, and keeping in mind where the tax assessments are in line with where the tax rate is. And it's very important that we try to keep that burden as low as possible on the taxpayers uh, so that we're not creating a bigger burden for you as we go forward and try to spend our money. Like he said, we're going we're gonna to have to pay taxes. I had a friend that, that decided he'd get on our appraisal board. He said, I'm going to change things. He got on there and he found out 
that the state tells you what to do with property taxes. You can't do a whole lot about it yourself because the state sets rules and regulations. So we just got to manage taxes and do what we can. Thank you. I was one of the members of the delegation of the Lost Pines Republican Women that went to the Texas legislature to, uh, to uh, testify for property tax reform, SB2. Uh, I'm a member of LPRW, I'm a second class associate member. <laughs> but, listen, property tax is a socialistic tax. If you read the original bill that was passed in 83, it comes out of the socialist handbook. It's ridiculous. What's, it's only a step away from eliminating inherited wealth. I am for eliminating property tax. Until then, we'll work to fix as much as we can, but you don't fix taxes, you get rid of them. We've got to demystify this. The problem with property tax is not at the, at the uh, county or city level, it's at the state level. A state has failed to, to step up to the plate and take care of their fair share, therefore passing the buck off to the local communities. This has to stop and we have to work with our legislature to see what we can do to, to end this drain on the local community. Uh, now you will each have one minute to give your uh, concluding thoughts. I'd like to bring uh, 40 plus years of public service, two terms on the city council, uh, in the city of Bastrop to the position of judge. It's vitally important that we have a, an inclusive, collaborative government at the county level, customer service oriented to ensure that citizens of Bastrop County needs are met. If you remember nothing else, nothing else about me is that I'm a Christian, I'm a family man, I'm a veteran and I'm a conservative who believes in leadership No, you're fine. Sorry. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> the leadership is about action and not just a title. It's a thrill to be here today. My life has been one of service. 35 years of military service, 22 Air Force fighter pilot, instructor pilot, test pilot, th test pilot, 13 years Texas State Guard as a servant soldier. In that regard, I worked many emergencies and national disasters. I worked with DPS and emergency management. I was a firefighter here for 15 years, certified volunteer, firefighter too. My life is one of service. The biggest thrill I had in elected office was being the first Republican to be elected to office as Bastrop County Commissioner of Precinct 3. That was very fulfilling and it broke my heart when I was not reelected because I was redistricted so I couldn't get reelected. I'm here to fight for you. I'm here to serve you. I'm here to do the very best job and do whatever it takes in my life to make that happen. Thank you. Like I said, I've served Bastrop County citizens for over for over 45 years in air conditioning building. I'm a VFW commander for 12 years. Uh, I've worked with the Ladies Auxiliary. I thought bingo with the Ladies Auxiliary for 25 years. I was instrumental in our, in our Rocket Community Recreation and stuff. And I decided to quit the air conditioning business, but I wanted to keep serving the people of Bastrop County. So that's the reason I'm running for Bastrop County Judge. And I appreciate all of y'all's vote. Thank you. Well, thank you again, everybody, for being here this evening. I didn't have the pleasure of military service, but I've served here at home in fire, EMS, emergency management, and I want to continue doing that here in Bastrop County. I do appreciate you guys learning more about me. I'm a Christian. I'm a family man. I've raised my families here and I continue to try to serve best I can. I manage a business and uh, manage budgets upwards of $100 million. I'd like to bring that experience to Bastrop County and serve you once again. I thank you for your vote. If you want to know more, look at hicksforbastrop.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all in the round of applause. Thank you.
Okay, moving on to County Treasurer. Bastrop County Treasurer. We've got both candidates uh, here tonight, I believe. We'll start uh, with Brittany Ross uh, for Bastrop County Treasurer. Uh, just a reminder, one minute, introduce yourself, uh, and tell folks why you're running. Hello, everybody. My name is Brittany Ross, and I'm running for Bastrop County Treasurer. A little bit about myself. I have spent most of my life here in Bastrop County, raised in Smithville. Um, I have been married for nine years, and I have a wonderful little five-year-old boy and eight-year-old girl. I'm a graduate of Smithville High School. Right out of high school, I started my college career at Baylor University. Ultimately, I graduated with honors from the University of Maine Crest Isle, Magna Cum Laude. Um, for my experience, I have spent time in the private sector covering accounts payables, accounts receivables, and account management. I also spent time as part of the uh, Bastrop County Auditors team where we oversaw the treasurer's office. I led audits. I was liaison for the office and other county, or other county departments. Um, I also attended and participated in commissioner's court. I have reconciled accounts and I have reviewed financial documents. Again, my name is Brittany Ross. I'm running for Bastrop County Treasurer and I appreciate your vote. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mandy Vasquez, and I'm running for county treasurer. I'm a native Australian with strong roots in my community. I'm a first generation college graduate with a bachelor's degree in business administration with a finance minor. I have worked in the treasurer's office for almost five years. I am the chief deputy treasurer. I have over 20 years of experience in all administrative functions. To say that I've been busy since I announced my candidacy would be an understatement. Working full time and running, working full time and campaigning while trying to be the best wife and mom I could has not been easy, but I have been, I've handled whatever has been thrown at me. You can never understand the demands of the treasurer's office until you've worked there. We have deadlines that are not flexible and workloads that do not stop. As Bastrop County faces exponential growth, it is vital to elect a candidate with the experience to manage the office. I can unequivocally say that I am the most qualified candidate, not only because of my education and experience, but also because of my knowledge of my day-to-day -day operations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, go ahead and stay out there. Uh, we have a few questions in here. Uh, the first is, uh, obviously a position like this uh, requires, uh, it's a little different than some of the other positions we've heard from tonight. Um, how does being a Republican play a part in being a county treasurer? I really don't think that it should play a part in being the treasurer, but we're up here, so I guess that that's important to people. Um, I am conservative, I'm very, I'm very a hardcore conservative person, so I guess the handling finances is something that conservatives are good at. So I think um, essentially being a Republican is an advantage. And I'll uh, pose the same question to uh, uh, Ricky Ross as well. Part of being a Republican, I believe, is having integrity. And it is important in this position to have, have integrity and be the first line of defense for this county and for your tax dollars. So I believe that it is important um, for this position to be a Republican, to be somebody who is going to stand there and take part and watch over your money. Uh, what, is, what is one, uh, this is, we only have 30 seconds for the questions, what is one improvement you would make uh, to the way uh, the treasurer's office is run now. Yeah, absolutely. I'll speak about this more a little bit later. However, I believe that it's important for the treasurer to take part in this community and in this county. So if I am elected treasurer, I will absolutely be attending the commissioner's court meetings where it's imperative for us to understand and know what we are discussing, what's coming down the pipeline to hit our desk. Um, I also believe it's important to have a strong leader and a strong voice for that office. You need somebody who's going to stand up and not be afraid to tell somebody, mm, you're not doing this correctly. So, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Same question. Uh. <coughs> um, one thing that I would change is it's not really an, a leadership thing that I would change, but we have um, a lot of people, we just sent out W2s, 
So we have a lot of employees who lose those W-2s. So I would like to implement an employee portal where employees are able to go download their own W-2, change their addresses, uh, change, they can change their filing, filing statuses, Thank you. <laughs> um, with a uh, leadership position like county treasurer, um, what would you say is your leadership style? Um, my leadership style is is probably more laid back. Um, I am not going to oversee every single aspect of the office. That's just going to take too much time. We have a great team right now. Our accounts payable, our accounts receivable people are awesome, and they don't really need to be watched over twenty four seven. Uh, we know our jobs, we know what we're supposed to do. We handle our bills, we handle the payroll every week. It's, it's every other week, but <coughs> thank you. <clears throat> I am a strong personality. I believe that by being treasurer, I can bring a kindness to the women who work in that office but also somebody who will demand excellence. I believe that it's important to cross-train and to have um, confidence in those that are working there, but you also need to make sure that they too are doing their job to the best of their ability. So I believe that if I'm elected um, county treasurer, that's exactly what I'll bring. I'll bring a strong leadership. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, go into uh, one minute uh, closing remarks. Okay. So I touched on this a little bit earlier. However, I believe that one aspect that is crucial to being the county treasurer is being an active participant. And that is not just in the office. If elected, I will be an active participant in commissioner's court. Um, it's, it is imperative for the treasurer and for the team to have an understanding of things such as contracts, bids, procurement policy, grants, all of these things, we are the very first offense against things going um, being done incorrectly within this county. So I believe that this is a big job. You have approximately $50 million within the general fund budget. You add a grant, you're looking at about $100 million with that. You need a treasurer who is going to efficiently maintain um, these funds and be involved. If elected, that's gonna be my initial focus. I believe I will bring a voice and be a leader to this office. I have yet to meet um, a challenge that I wouldn't meet head, that I wouldn't face head on. And so I know that determination is going to be an asset to protecting your tax dollars. Again, I am Brittany Ross. I'm running for Bastrop County Treasurer, and I would appreciate your support and your vote come March 1st. I would like to thank the Los Angeles Republican Women for hosting this forum. My decision to run for County Treasurer was not one made in haste. My journey to this point has been over a year in the making. I have been preparing to take on this role when the current treasurer retires. Last March, I attended the 49th Annual County Treasurer's Continuing Education Seminar. This March, I will be attending the Basics of County Investment course. Continuing education and practical experience will be an asset for a seamless transition of leadership. I am the most qualified candidate with a strong conservative voting record. I have also been endorsed by Bastrop County Young Republicans. At the end of the day, the citizens of Bastrop County should always vote for what is best for the office. That is an experienced professional who has the knowledge to navigate the increasing workload that is coming sooner rather than later. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, we've got back. Bastrop County District Clerk. Uh, we've got our first candidate. Uh, we've got both candidates here tonight, I believe. Uh, our first candidate is Tamara, or uh, Tammy, um, I'm going to mess up the last name. Is Bata. Bata. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh, one minute introduction while you're ready for the position. Good evening, everybody. My name is Tamara Bato. I'm running for district clerk of Bastrop County. I moved to Bastrop County 14 years ago to take a position at the district clerk's office. I loved my job there, and I have moved on to the sheriff's office and I work in the finance department. I decided to run for Bastrock clerk a long time ago and just, and just 
said, I will be a, the district clerk one of these days. I'll be the district clerk one of these days. And this is my time to run and hopefully get that position. Thank you. Next we have Sarah Lux. Good evening, everybody. Hello. I know it's kind of late, but I just want you to know I really appreciate you being here, and I appreciate the LPRW for having this this evening. This is a really good turnout. Uh, I'm Sarah Lauk. I am the current district clerk and have been in the office for 11 years. The district clerk's office, in a nutshell, is the keeper of the record. We do everything from adoptions, tax suits, civil suits, divorces. We, do, we don't do misdemeanors. We don't take uh, parking ticket money. <laughs> we do felonies all, all the way up to capital murder cases. It's a very busy office. Uh -huh. okay. uh, it's a very busy office. Uh, we go to court. We have lots of. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Let me see up there. Well, I'll go ahead and ask the first question, which is, um, and this will be a little different because we've got uh, an incumbent and a challenger here. Uh, one thing is, if you're elected to another term, um, what what kind of initiatives will you uh, put in place in the district clerk's office? Um, one of my main well. There are a lot of initiatives. I guess my main concern would have to be the burden on the county for the growth in Bastrop County. It is, it's been growing for years, but it's beyond that now. It's almost like it's exploding and it's going to affect every county office in the county. Uh, the more people move here, the more divorces we'll have, uh, the more court cases we'll have, the more crime rates, the higher the crime rate, and that has to do with the sheriff's office, has to do with the district attorney's office, my office. That's the, yeah, the 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Tim, uh, same question. Essentially to you, if you were elected, what would you do differently, I suppose, in the district? I was elected to district clerk, I wouldn't make any changes right away. I would take 60 to 90 days to evaluate what's going on in that office, see if there are any changes that need to be made, make changes as they come up. And when I was there, our staff was good. I'm sure the staff is good now. So um, I would make sure for cross training, that's a major thing is to make sure that everybody's trained in all aspects. So you stay up there. Uh, I've got another question for you, um, which is uh, similar to a question I asked uh, earlier, which is um, district clerk office, it is a partisan race. Uh, should it be partisan? And, and you know, if so, what, what, what do you bring as a Republican uh, to the office? Well, I am a proud Republican, but I do not believe that that office should be partisan. It is for the whole community, not just for one side or the other. Um, everybody needs to be represented represented in that office fairly and equally. <clears throat> so, same, uh, same question. Um, I was the first Republican elected as district clerk since I think the 1800s. Um, but it, the office really doesn't have anything to do with politics. It's about serving the public, serving the community. Um, I'm really, really big on when somebody comes into my office and they're not happy because they're getting a divorce or having some kind of legal problems, I'm really big on making sure they know that we are there for them and trying to help them in every way we can. And it doesn't matter what party I belong to. Uh, do you want to stay up there for a minute closing statement? Uh, like I said earlier, 
the the biggest problem I think at this point is the growth. Um, I do have some projects in the works. We are always making changes. The legislature makes changes, and we have to follow those. We just uh, had a new fee schedule going to effect January 1st that is has confused probably every district clerk in the state of Texas, and is still being worked out. Um, I have a new jury system that's we are going to be going live. We were supposed to go live in April. That has now changed to May. And that had a lot to do with COVID because we couldn't get the training in that we were supposed to get in during COVID. Um, I'm cross-training on that. I have at least six people learning that. It is, you will be able to respond online to your jury summit. It's been a post public speaker but every time I get up here it gets a little easier and a little easier um, I vow to be a hands-on district clerk if I was elected the public needs assistance and they need assistance when they're hurting usually um, So, um, I want to provide exceptional service to the community, to the, to, to this residents of Ashtrop County. I want to streamline any filing processes that need streamlining more than what they already are. And I, um, my name is Tamara Bacho. I'm running for district clerk and I would appreciate considering my vote, your votes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Yes. Yeah, four, four more races. So if you need to stretch your legs, maybe now's a good time. Uh, uh, sticking it out here till the end. Uh, but we've got some, still some important uh, positions. Uh, first up, we're going to have in this race, I believe, again, we've got all three candidates appearing for this, which is County Commissioner Precinct 2. Uh, I want to welcome up first the incumbent Clara Beckett uh, to give a minute introduction uh, to the line she's coming. I just want to th say thanks to the, um, LPRW for hosting this event. Great turnout, real proud of you. My name is Clara Beckett. I'm the Precinct 2 County Commissioner. Um, I'm married 30 years. I have two adult children I'm really proud of. I have a bachelor's degree in construction engineering from Texas Tech University. Um, spent about 10 years in the private sector uh, in, for heavy uh, construction projects. Um, I was the first elected uh, in 2002 as the second Republican to any office in the county. I think I was Republican before it was cool. Um, <laughs> You know, we've, we've faced a lot of disasters in Bastrop County over the past 11 years. I've been actively involved in making sure every federal tax dollar, our federal tax dollars that we deserve are returned back and go to worthy projects. Um, I've been very active in that regard. Uh, I serve as the um, judge pro tem on the court. Um, I serve as the liaison to the engineering development part, department, which is really the heartbeat uh, Bastrop Rock County as it relates to handling growth. Thank you. Next up we've got Leroy Carroll. Leroy Carroll. Leroy Carroll. Yeah. So? Okay, uh, I've been running for county commissioner uh, with a little experience I got. I worked 15 years with the Lower Colorado River Authority, and I was a crew leader there. I also assisted in the budgeting and building of site preps. Um, currently working for Bass Rock County, Precinct 3. Uh, I'm assistant foreman there. I have a lot of knowledge on, I got a lot of knowledge on construction, 
20 years of it, over 20 years of construction. Uh, and I just like to build roads. And that's what I, my main focus would be on, is making sure the roads are in good shape. And thank you. Thank you. And uh, last week we have Walker Hancock. First and foremost, thank you to the Lost Pines Republican Women for giving me the opportunity to speak, and uh, thank you to you all for sticking around this long. Uh, my name is Walter Hancock. I'm from Smithville, Texas. I'm a sixth generation Bashaw County resident. Uh, I'm running for county commissioner to see that this county grows, that as this county grows, its history and values aren't swallowed up like must much of the Austin Metroplex. Along with that, my main concerns are maintenance of our infrastructure, and ensuring its longevity, mitigation of the next natural disaster, supporting our first, first responders, and making sure that they have all the all their needs covered to help us. Um, and then, of course, reducing the burden on the taxpayer. I believe that all these things are possible while keeping Bashup County an affordable and uh, affordable place to live and raise families. Thank you. Thank you. If you'll stay up there, uh, we've got our first question. Uh, last year, the Commissioner's Court took action relocating a monument from the courthouse grounds to another more obscure location. What is your opinion of that decision and its reflection on the county? Like I said, I'm here to support Bashaw County and its history. Uh, that's something I feel as though it should have gone to the vote, as a vote to the public. Uh, you know, whatever the public decides, majority, I think it's what should happen. I don't think the monument should have been messed with at all. It's, I mean, that's history. You don't erase history. I think it should have stayed right where it was at. Well, the monuments are still there. <laughs> and um, I pushed back pretty hard on this. This is near and dear to my heart. I have a long history. Uh, back to the Daughters of the American Revolution. I have ancestors who fought in the Civil War. My grandfather fought in World War I. My father was a tail gunner in World War II. And, I'm a former NCO in the United States Army. So I take this issue extremely seriously. I fought back really hard on any notion of destroying, dismantling, or otherwise. Um, I think there's some compromises that we could come up with that are reasonable, but for now, the monuments are still there. Another question, yeah, just stay up there <laughs> for another question. Um, Taxpayer-funded lobbying, similar question uh, that I asked the county judge candidates, which is, is taxpayer-funded lobbying appropriate? Should counties be sending lobbyists to Austin? Well, just all, about all 254 counties in the state of Texas pay dues to the Ta Texas Association of Counties. They do a lot of other things. Um, I think it is important that we go to the legislature and speak our own minds straight to the legislature. I'm going to preach a little bit here. Um, you know, Property taxes. Three sessions, four sessions, they've been talking about it. Anybody opened up their bill, your taxes any less? Your road and bridge tax is about nine cents. Your school tax is about a dollar thirty-seven. Okay? And until we figure out how to re uh, structure school finance, our taxes aren't gonna go down. I do think we should send someone up there, you know, just to make sure it's for the best interest of the county. Um, it's really a tough one. I believe that it's up to us as the county representatives, the judge, um, and the citizens. You know, we should all do our part and go voice our opinion. Um, as far as you know, using taxpayer money to do that or to advocate, I feel as though taxpayer money could be better used elsewhere to really ensure that we, as a county government, can see what we're spending these funds on and uh, ensure that it really goes to help Bashaw County. Uh, last question here. If the legislature voted to allow counties to zone unincorporated, unincorporated areas to manage, not eliminate, manage growth, would you support a planning and zoning board to manage growth in Bastrop's unincorporated areas? Um, growth is one of the most important things to me. Um, I feel that we're in a pretty advantageous position right now with our location of Paulson, uh, how cheap land prices are in Bastrop, and 
you know, I feel like we should be, we have the opportunity to kind of pick and choose what we want and how we want to, uh, how we really want growth to occur in Bachelor County. Uh, I think that we need to uh, keep our uh, natural resources here in the county and we need to just prepare for the future. Not real familiar with that area, to be honest with you. Uh, so it's, I, mean, I don't really think we needed to. I'd have to check more into that. Sometimes it's like, be careful what you ask for. Um, I'm, I, I'm opposed to zoning um, in counties. I think that the legislature could do a little better under Chapter 232 of the Local Government Code, which is what we uh, is our regulatory authority to deal with growth. Um, I think Bastrop County uses just about every tool in the toolbox that the legislature has given us. I think we could use a few more tools, but I don't think that the citizens of Bastrop County uh, that choose to live in, live in the rural area want to be zoned. Uh, we do have one minute to give us some closing, uh, closing remarks. Well, it's been a real honor to serve the citizens in this capacity. I really love my job. Um, I like talking to people. I like facing challenges. Um, I want to continue to uh, serve the residents, particularly with regard to um, regional transportation issues. I mean, county roads are important. They really, really are. There's 385 miles of county roads, and we've got over half the bridges in our precinct. Um, it's important. But regional transportation issues, I serve... Um, on the Campo, that's Capital Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, and represent the county appointed by the Commissioner's Board. That board of 22 elected officials throughout the region allocates millions of millions of your federal tax dollars to the region. It is important that we have a strong voice on the Campo Board to fight off Travis County, Austin, and their horrible policies of don't build it and they won't come. Uh, we need good infrastructure in the region on worthy projects, overpasses, more capacity and safety projects. Uh, I'd like to thank y'all for having us out here this today. Um, yeah, with the growth coming and stuff, uh, you know, we got to make sure that the roads and the bridges are in good shape. Uh, we need to I think we need to focus on with the growth that. Uh, any subdivisions that are built, we need to make sure that they are built correctly and to county specs. I have seen personally some that ain't. So when the county inherits them, they get like two years period, then they get take them over. Um, you know, then we have to spend our tax, you know, tax money to fix them right. And just looking forward to serving the community. I appreciate your vote. Thank you. Um, forgive me for reading off my phone here. Uh, I got some notes I just didn't want to let get by me. Uh, I built homes in Austin, uh, and through work, I've spoken with a number of developers and other builders, and they all tell me that Bashaw County is the cheapest place to buy land. They're all trying to come here and develop it. That's right. Um, what that means is that with cheap land, proximity to Austin, proximity to the airport, it makes me believe that we have the leverage to ensure that Bashaw County grows the right way. To me, that means allowing companies that will provide jobs to citizens of Bashaw County, as well as pay their fair share of taxes. Yeah. Uh, I want to ensure that all of our first responders are equipped to tackle the challenges that come with an increase of population. I want to see that the water beneath our feet stays here, so that in 10 years, we don't have to pump water from halfway across Texas just to get a drink out of the spigot. Um, and of course, I want to plan our infrastructure, infrastructure see that it can be utilized for the years ahead. Um, I'm just Walker Hancock, thank y'all. Thank you, and uh, please give them all a round of applause. We've got uh, one more county commissioner. Which is precinct four. Uh, and first, I uh, want to welcome uh, Michael Durant uh, to the stage. He did a one minute introduction. For everybody bounce. <laughs> uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I am running for Commissioner Precinct 4. 
And my background is basically advisory, figuring out systems, figuring out what's broken. I own a couple of businesses. I'm a business consultant as well as a branding expert. But what I've focused on when I came to Bastrop is the community. I fell in love with this community very fast. I was uh, born in Lake Charles, Louisiana. I'm about five generations there and four here in Texas. I was raised in Houston, Texas. God brought me all the way to Las Vegas, Nevada to find my wife, five boys, and then he brought me back home. So running for this, I've already stepped in and started talking to departments. I wanted to see what the issues was. People are asking questions and I wanted to figure out the answers. The best way to do that is go talk to people. And I've already been doing that. This is a full-time thing. That's what I want to be for you, a full-time commissioner. Thank you. And uh, I'm uh, one more thing is uh, Darren. I'm going to mess up the last name. But don't get it. Pretty close. Pretty close? OK, good. <laughs> one minute introduction while you're running for the spot. Thank you. Um, as you said, my name is Darren Magoni. I'm running for county commissioner uh, of Precinct 4. I'm from the, born and raised in the Elgin area. I'm a graduate of Texas A&M University. My professional life, I have uh, worked in construction in the, in the Bastrop County area and uh, worked in the um, oil and gas industry, uh, five years offshore and more recently uh, out in uh, West Texas. I'm running to take care of our roads, work with the commissioners, be involved in this growth that we're seeing at such an exponential rate, and anyway, I look forward to questions. Great. I uh, want to uh, mention before we get to questions that David Glass, uh, who's an Elgin ISD board member, sent his regrets. Uh, tonight there's an important meeting on mask mandates. I uh, felt it was important to uh, to be there tonight, but I'm going to get into the questions here. Tell me uh, if you've heard of these, because uh, they're similar to the ones uh, we asked the other commissioner candidates. Uh, but uh, the first one was sent in. It says, last year, this commissioner's court took action, relocating a monument from the courthouse grounds to another more obscure location. What is your opinion of that decision and its reflection on the county? So I remember attending that commissioner court and, and listening to how that process went on. and. One of the things that I remember that uh, Judge Paul Poppy mentioned in a uh, petition that had been put together was that there were so many of the names on it weren't even, much less from Bastrop County, they weren't even from the state of Texas. And to me, I, I would have voted no in moving that monument because I don't believe in allowing what's going on nationally or in all these other aspects people being able to come and force and tell us what to do. Same question. Well, I think it's going to have a perspective on that. And I will say this, um, we have great history and we have history that we're not proud of. And I get to see both sides because I've been in both worlds. I don't really care much about moving monuments. I would rather see money put into places that would actually be beneficial. But I will say, and I will continue to address uh, the Republican Party, that we need to be a lot more inclusive. There's a lot of African Americans and Hispanics that are trying to come out, and they want to feel like they want to be a part of it. And as a Christian brother, I would hope that anything that offends our brother, that we're willing to do something about it. Taxpayer funded lobby. Should counties uh, use tax dollars to send lobbyists to Austin? For Bastrop, no. I have just met with a couple of departments and I was trying to figure out where we were going with our broadband. I was trying to figure out what was going on with our emergency centers. We do not have the money to just be sending people there, but we do need a voice in Austin. I think right now when we look at how much money we have within our county, we have to reallocate some things and we have to streamline this budget and break it down. I've looked at it at this high level, but most people have no clue what's really going on with our money. And it's the best way to do that is to have a voice, but right here at home, take a look at everything. I agree with a lot of that. I also think that as an elected official from Bastrop County, it's part of our responsibility to do everything we can to reach out to those uh, state representatives and be that liaison between the citizens of Bastrop County and our elected officials in Austin and do everything we can to try to work with them as ourselves, not uh, 
trying to hire a lobbyist. Last question here. Uh, if the legislature voted to allow counties to zone unincorporated areas to manage, would you support a planning and zoning board to manage growth in Bastrop's unincorporated areas? Yeah, when I think about that question, I think about emergency services and anything that we could do to work with developers, as it's been said, we have so much growth coming, we've grown by 30, over 30% 30 in just the last 10 years here in Bastrop County. And I would be open to looking into something like a planning and zoning board that was focused on making sure these developers are doing everything we can to increase emergency services. Can you give me a question again? Yes, if the legislature voted to allow counties to zone unincorporated areas, uh, to manage growth, would you support a planning and zoning board to manage growth in Bastrop's unincorporated areas? I think it's something we should we should look at. But when I talked to a few of the department heads uh, this last two weeks, there's so many loopholes. There's so many loopholes to get certain things done, to get to commissioners' court, to get it approved, and we have to make sure whatever we decide to do that we can streamline, put some things in front. Zoning is important. I just found out 600 acres were sold by my property. It is all going to be developed. Mm -hmm. I don't like it, but we need to have the people of the county, people of different precincts coming together to be able to make it something that you can work with. Yeah, one minute to close the remarks. I'm sorry, I haven't eaten. I've been waiting all this time. My, my hands are a little shaky. Um, close the remarks is I see, as I've talked to so many people across the county, uh, we've asked for blessings in Bastrop. Bastrop has gone through a lot of things. And now that we see growth, I've said it's about 75% that want to see growth, and it's 25% that want to kind of keep it what it is. But whenever you try to manage growth and you don't put in the, the right infrastructure, it will burst at the seams. I will say as we move forward as a county, being able to work with commissioners across the board and not only look after our precinct, but look at this county as a whole is going to be important. I just pray also, us as a party, that we actually start to stand up and take the ball. We should stop fighting for what we should be doing together as is. We're Republicans, we're conservative, put aside the differences and go out and stand up together. If all the, the, the alphabet community can do it, I know we can too. <laughs> like I said, Bastrop County is my home. This is the place that I've always been and I plan to continue to stay. Good Lord willing, I plan to raise my kids here and be able to leave a place better than, than we found it, is, is my hope. I want to work with the, uh, with the other county commissioners, the county commissioners and other uh, offices that surround them, Precinct 4, just not within our county. And I uh, thank you very much for your time and would appreciate the support. Thank you. Give a round of applause. Uh, both of these. These are Justice of the Peace positions. Um, and so our first uh, precinct here, we've got Precinct 1. Um, we've got both candidates here tonight, I believe. And so we'll start with Cindy Allen, if you want to come down uh, and give a minute introduction uh, as to uh, why you're running uh, again for Justice of the Peace. I'll start by telling me, I'm just going to let y'all know, I just got off my 24 hour, seven day um, call, so I'm a little tired, so I'm going to try my best to read this without uh, stuttering. Uh, uh, good evening, my name is Cindy Allen. I am currently the incumbent for Justice of the Peace. Precinct 1. I've been a Bass Rock resident for 23 years. I am married to James for 26 years. I have two adult children, both graduates of Bass Rock High School. I am seeking re-election because I've always believed in the calling of public service and I believe in helping my community. As a Justice of the Peace, I preside over criminal case by only misdemeanors, civil cases, small claims, debt claims, evictions, administrative hearing hearings such as dog hearings, licensing, performing marriages, and so forth. I bring 23 years of working experience within the judicial system and the criminal justice field. 
As our county girls, it is important that you have someone who has specialized training in the field of court administration and the judicial process. Thank you. Thank you. And now we've got uh, Warren Northcutt. Hi, my name is Ward Northcutt. I'm a longtime citizen of Bastrop Precinct 1. Uh, that's uh, some of what my interest is. Um, I was a police officer for 32 years. So back to blue, I think is really important. I got this from Tatum back there. But uh, li literally, I think uh, our police officers are so important to us. Um, and a Justice of the Peace is also uh, a, a law enforcement officer as well. Um, Cindy uh, responds to different things, including uh, 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 when someone dies as well. Thank you. Uh, go ahead and stay up there. Uh, and just for, for time here, we'll ask uh, one question before we get to the conclusions. But uh, the question is, Justice of the Peace, again, like some of these other positions, it's a little, it's a little different. Um, how, why is it important to elect a Republican to the position of Justice of the Peace? Well, Republicans, uh, one of the main things that we have as Republicans is that we, are, we believe in representation by the people from our area. And, and I believe that as well. Um, I've lived in Teeson Village. Um, Ten years ago, my, uh, every, every house on my block burned down, um, except for my house. My house uh, survived a lot of repairs later and that sort of thing. But you know, we represent, and so even when we had the scare of a fire just recently, I mean, the people in my area are really concerned and want a representative that will re represent their area in Precinct 1. I, I, for one, I am uh, for equal justice. I took an oath and I am bound by canons. And I am a proud Republican, I can say that. But the people that come to me need to know that this is the people's court and I will have to be fair and impartial to both parties. So I just want to know, just let you know I am a proud Republican. The decisions of the Justice of, Peace, of the Peace are significant to the people who appear before the court. All persons be, appearing before the court should be able to trust that the judge is knowledgeable as to the law, the rules of evidence and procedures, and is capable of rendering a fair and impartial ruling. I strive for high standards of responsibility, keeping myself accountable for getting the work done and finishing assignments on time. Having a solid work ethic means to understand that productivity, organizational skills, being reliable, and possessing good character are traits that I will continue to administer as your Justice of the Peace for Precinct 1. I am so proud and so honored that y'all have given me this privilege to do this. This is my third year, and I, I cannot tell you how proud and honored I am to have this position. And it would be an honor to continue serving the citizens of Bastrop. On March 1st, vote Cindy Allen. Thank you. And so, um, literally what we're talking about now is the, the chance for any one of us that's a regular citizen to walk up and decide, you know, I want to make a difference in my government. I want things to change. And you know, each one of you that are sitting out there knows someone else who will vote for either Cindy or myself if you're from Precinct 1. Precinct 1 has grown so much that there are now 10,000 voters in our area. That's a lot. Um, and these, all of these people are really important and should be important to any elected official. And that includes the Justice of the Peace. Um, I would say that e either one of us, very good qualifications. Uh, I think you're going to get you're going to gain by either one of us. I think uh, the Republican Party in general. I've been really happy to work uh, on the numerous campaigns over the years. And the one that hit me the most was four years ago when uh, Sherry Cook ran for the same office that I'm running for as well. Uh, uh, my, again, my name is Warren Northcutt. I would appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to both of you. Uh, well, Uh, the last 
but not least, position that is is Justice of the Peace, Precinct 3. Uh, we're lucky to have both candidates here for this last position. Uh, so we'll start out uh, with Crystal uh, Stabino. Stabino, okay. I uh, should have looked at some of these names before I came down here. Uh, Crystal Stabino, one minute, introduce yourself um, and why you're running. Good evening, everyone. My name is Crystal Monkier Stabino. I'm running for Justice of the Peace in Precinct 3. I was recently appointed to this position this past November in Commissioner's Court. And January 1st, I was sworn in and I started my JP duties. I've been fulfilling those. I've made some minor changes within the office. I brought more technology within the courtroom. But to give you a little history of myself, I'm born and raised from Bastrop again. I'm Bastropian. Um, I've lived here my whole life. I graduated Texas State with a bachelor's degree. I have 10 years of criminal justice experience. I'm knowledgeable in court procedure, court setting, and court documentation. I've testified on numerous court cases from revocations to TJJB hearings. I've worked hand in hand with law enforcement. I'm very familiar with their protocol and their procedures, as well as the DA's office and the attorneys. Again, I'm Crystal Stamble, I'm running for Justice of the Peace, and I appreciate y'all's vote for March 1st. First of all, hats off to the uh, Los Angeles Republican women. I appreciate that. Uh, my name is Mark White. Um, I grew up in Southeast Texas and came to Bastrop as fast as I could. Uh, I um, have been working at Bastrop County Sheriff's Office for the last eight years or so. I run the medical department. I've been a nurse for over 20 years and um, have a firsthand knowledge of, of the processes that happen you know, with the magistration process. Um, I am uh, I think <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we've got uh, yeah that was a 30 second one yeah. uh, why is it important to elect a Republican to a position like JP? I don't know if uh, partisan is important for the actual office. I, I think that typically Republicans are more conservative. So when it comes to the budget, I think uh, being fiscally responsible for that budget is, uh, comes with being a Republican. Um, I think that um, with the training, I think better trained employees definitely make better employees. And I think that that it doesn't really matter Republican or Democrat. I think that, you know, thank you. So I'm a strong Republican. I believe in all beliefs and the principles that fall under the Republican Party. But as a JP, my opinions and my beliefs don't play a factor in how I rule in a, in a court hearing. We're there to determine the facts and then we make our ruling. So Republican, yes, but as far as how it happens in the courtroom, I mean, that's just based on facts in the law, so. So I'll give you a one minute for any closing, closing remarks. So this isn't something that I thought about overnight and decided to do as a retirement gig. I have been thinking about this for the last four years and when I heard Judge Hannah was gonna retire, I was full force, all in, boots on the ground, 100%. Um, my biggest push is education, because in the criminal justice field, what I have seen, because I was a juvenile probation officer here in the county, is that people don't understand the law and they don't know there's consequences. I know that's funny, but they really don't think there are. My biggest push is to educate and I want people to leave, know when they leave my courtroom that they were treated fairly, they were respected, and that they were heard because at the end of the day, we all wanna be heard. Um, as a judge, we listen um, and then we determine the facts and we make our ruling. Um, but again, I'm very excited for this opportunity. I'm blessed to be appointed um, and I hope that the community sees all the changes I'm doing and they keep me in for a very long time because I want to do this for a long time. I don't want to do this for a short, short time. So I appreciate everyone's vote come March 1st. Uh, after I graduated high school, I joined the Navy uh, during Desert Storm time, did a couple tours, did some sub service. And uh, being a nurse, um, it is nothing but service. And for most of my life, I've done nothing but service. And also working with the, the sheriff's office, it, it is absolutely about service. And I am here to serve for you. Um, I just, I thank you for your time and thank you for all 
who have, who have stayed. <laughs> Thank you. You both can answer round of applause. Thank you. That is our last race for tonight. So we have all the candidates who came here a round of applause. Sometimes 9.15, two minutes early, man, so you've got some time for some uh, wrapping up comments here. Uh, but thank you so much.